Hello and welcome. This is Jamie at Soap Authority and today I'm going to be making a double batch of Valentine's Heart Soap. I'll be using a loaf mold that will give me 10 bars of soap and this really cute six cavity silicone heart mold. Let's get out the supplies and get started. I'm gonna start with measuring out my oils and I usually do this the night before so it's just one less thing I have to do on soap making day. Now for the palm oil and I need to heat it up and stir it before I add it to my oils because if I don't the fatty acids won't be evenly distributed and that will throw off the recipe. You can see some of the separation on top where it's a lighter white and then beneath it's a little more creamy yellow. I'm using my microwave 30 seconds at a time to prevent overheating but you could also do this on your stovetop using low heat. I try and heat my palm oil until it's melted most of the way and then I stir it letting the residual heat melt it the rest of the way. When I got this palm oil originally it was in a five gallon bucket and I had to heat the whole thing up, stir it really well and then break it down into a bunch of smaller containers so it would be more manageable. And you can get the no stir palm oil that you can just scoop out without having to do the melt and stir thing and so after all of that hassle with the five gallon bucket. I think I'm absolutely ready to try that option. Now that I have my oils measured, I'm gonna heat them in the microwave to about 135 degrees, and I'm gonna do that in 30 second bursts. That will get it warm enough to melt and incorporate all the oils without getting it too hot. And if you get it too hot, it takes a really long time to cool down. And by then your husband, kids, other random people are at home getting in the way while you try and finish your soap. Now I'm gonna get my lye solution ready. So I'll start that with measuring my distilled water. It's time to measure the lye. So on with the safety glasses and gloves. It's time to mix the lye, so in addition to my safety gear, I've got some good ventilation going by opening several windows. I don't want to fumigate myself or any of my little rescue rabbits. This is Cookie Dough, and she's my little beggar. She always wants to eat whatever I'm eating. I like to pour the lye in all at once, and then I stir for a few minutes so it doesn't solidify and chunk up at the bottom. And sometimes it's hard to see if your lye is dissolved all the way. So what I did here is I put a black piece of craft paper in a plastic sleeve so I could better see the tiny little crystals at the bottom of the lye container. My recipe calls for Tessa silk and it's best to put that in when the lye solution is hot. It dissolves just a lot faster. When you add silk into your soap, it's gonna make a really nice, luxurious, silky bar. And with this Tessa silk that I'm using, you don't need to worry, it's actually cruelty-free, and that means it's harvested after the silkworms have shed their cocoons. While I'm waiting for my lye and oils to cool down, I'm gonna prep the rest of the ingredients that I need. And what I'll be using is one of my favorite fragrances, Black Raspberry Vanilla. It's slightly tart with a hint of vanilla to sweeten it up just a bit. And one of the nice things about working with this fragrance oil is how well it behaves. It's not going to accelerate trace, and what it does is it actually slows it down a little bit, making it a good choice when you need more time to make swirls. Next, I'm gonna mix my color. For that, I'm gonna need some olive oil. 
and a good rule of thumb when mixing mica colors is one tablespoon of light oil to one teaspoon of mica. The colored mica that I'm using today is raspberry red and it's actually more of a pink than a red as you can see and when you use it in cold process soap it, it looks pink as well. Now this mica won't stain if you use it as recommended but if you happen to get straight up dry mica on your formica countertop or your vinyl tablecloth or something like that here's a little tip I have. Get some coconut oil or olive oil to wipe it up. For some reason, once it mixes with that oil, it comes off of surfaces a lot easier. I'm going to check my oils and it looks like they're almost fully melted together. So what I'm going to do is just stir a little bit and help them along. It looks like it's still a little warm, so I'll get my molds ready. This is an aluminum baking sheet and aluminum and raw soap do not mix. I'm going to protect it with plastic wrap, but I really do need something solid under my mold because it's too flimsy. I need my soap to actually sit level and I need to be able to move it. This is one of my favorite loaf soap molds. It makes 10 bars of soap and it's really easy to unmold with the holes in the bottom of the wood. And the silicone liner is sturdy and washes up easy after each use. I usually like to wait until my oils cool down to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit before I add my lye solution. And since I'm doing a double batch, I need my oils to be in a larger container. Otherwise, when I put my lye solution in, it's going to overflow my Pyrex. Now I'm going to carefully add my lye solution so it doesn't splash by pouring it down the side of my stick blender. As I'm mixing, what I'm looking for is something between emulsification and a very thin trace. After adding the fragrance, I want to mix so it's evenly dispersed before dividing it to add color. I'm only using one color to get three different shades of pink by controlling the amount I add to each pitcher. I'll use some titanium dioxide mixed in water for further contrast. When using titanium dioxide mixed in water, it needs to be mixed in your soap really well or it can leave white spots in your soap. Sometimes the only way to ensure it's mixed in is by using a stick blender after you put it in your soap. So a few quick pops should do the trick and for this one I'm just stirring it a lot by hand. For this design, I'm going to be using an in-the-pot swirl.
It feels like there's too much light pink, so I'm gonna add some darker pink before I start to pour again. Of course I over poured on this one, so I'm gonna attempt to remove some of the soap and hope I don't destroy it. It still looks like it's ballooning out of there, so I'm gonna pull some more soap out of that. Here with our loaf mold, I'm gonna start with an in the pot swirl and then do a drop swirl on top of that. It's time to let the top of the soap firm up just a bit before adding the texture. I'm using a wooden skewer to finish off the top and I'm trying to make the top look somewhat like little roses. What do you think? Does it look like roses or swirls to you? My Valentine's loaf is finished. It just needs to be insulated and left alone for 24 hours. It's been almost 24 hours, so let's slice it up and see what it looks like inside. Well, it looks like there's good color contrast with the shades of pink. This is a soap cutter I made myself for about $20, and if you want to see how I made it, I'll put a link to that video below. I really like it. It does just as good a job as the expensive ones. All right, let's skip to the unmolding of the hearts. I really like this mold because the bars are a good size. They're probably between three and a half and four ounces, depending on how much you want to fill them. And I'll leave a link below for this exact soap mold.
It's really strange to get all these bubbles on the surface of the soap. Next time, I think I'll give each heart a spray of rubbing alcohol just before I do the pouring. That way it will kind of have less tension as it slides across the surface of the silicone. It actually looks kind of neat, kind of like a gemstone. What do you think? Well, that's it for today. I hope you found this helpful. Stay tuned for my next video where I'm gonna show you how to put a mica stamp on your cold process soap using some basic stamps that you can find at any craft store.